is an incredible athlete. He's a superstar. Back then, I, I was like, I do offer you a lot of money. All right, here's the deal, folks. You ever hear of something called an anxiety attack? You go to give a speech, right? Right before you go to give a speech, your heart starts pounding, your palms are sweaty, you got weird white stuff, and you don't even want to talk about that. All sorts of stuff is going on, but it could be a fear of getting on a plane. It could be a fear of actually being in a crowded place. It could be an interview that you have coming up and you're afraid of it. Well, for the next half hour, you're going to find out everything you've ever needed to know about phobias and fears. We are now joined by the founder of the Phobia Clinic. He is Seymour Segnet. And let me tell you something. I've listened to the tapes. This is good stuff. It is valuable. It is relevant. It is practical. And it can turn your life around and help you deal with those fears and those phobias just like that, only on one-on-one. -on -one. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We don't work off of a uh, teleprompter. You are looking at the smiling, I said smiling, smiling face of Seymour Segnet. He is the founder of the Phobia Clinic, and uh, he has been trained in the art of helping people get through. You see it right there? There's the book. It is Vanquish, Fear, and Anxiety. Now, listen, that's not a book, actually, is it? We should tell people. Uh, it's not a book. It's a, it's a home study program. Um, it's, we, we call it a, a compact and accelerated home study program. It's compact because it's in that neat little box. Here it is, right here, the neat little box. into your bag and take right. easily with you. I feel like Vanna White, go ahead. And it's accelerated because what we've tried to do is to put the best material, the, you know, the most important material that we teach our clients, onto three CDs. And a lot of these programs that you, you, you see them advertised on the infomercials and it's like, we'll send you 24 <laughs> CDs uh, and 16 videos. I, I, don't believe, I don't believe anybody ever gets through any of that Just material. Just these three. Yeah. So it's three CDs. Um, you, I think, have listened to some of it yes. at the very least. Uh, it takes three hours to go through it. We ask people to practice with the material more of the time. And I think it gives a very, um, at the very least, it gives a very clear understanding of what we believe is the best model in the world about what's going on in the mind when people are experiencing fears and phobias. Well, let's do this. I, I was debating whether I would actually disclose this on the air, but I'm going to disclose it because we're that kind of show. Um, I know a little bit about Seymour's work because a few months back, I decided to, I logged onto the website, not the website, the, the internet, and I was looking at but this whole thing about anxiety or panic disorder, all these things, because I was watching Tony Soprano and He's experiencing all sorts of panic and anxiety <laughs> disorders. And here's what really happened. One time before a speech, and I give speeches all the time, and I'm on the air all the time, I'm a public broadcaster, a communicator, I felt a degree of anxiety. I felt my heart pounding, my palms started getting sweaty, right. and I got very uncomfortable, and I got freaked out because it wasn't supposed to happen to me. Sure. And then it happened again right before I was going on the air live at another network at the Fox News Channel. And I thought, that's it, something's going on. And I checked around and I found out my mother, my father, my two sisters, my wife also tells me that she experiences it. And I said, what is it? Is it a family thing? And I started checking around because I wanted it to go away and I came across your website. I'm not alone. Uh, uh, not at all. I mean, in the, in the case of performance anxiety or stage fright or fear of public speaking, uh, the figures that we Wait, hear. Performance anxiety has nothing to do with sex, right? Well, uh, well I, I think it can be used in that context. The, the okay, context not for in which me, I'm, I just want to be clear. Uh, uh, I, who would have imagined? <laughs> um, the um, but performance anxiety in the sense of anxiety about a performance, yes. a speech, or, or um, some people experience it in meetings, in, in the business context, for sure. instance. Um, we hear, there are some statistics saying it's 63% of the adult population. What do they feel? Uh, I don't know. What do they feel? Why is the heart pounding? All of the, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist. Okay, so um, the work that we do is teaching people a model of how their mind is working, and we get great results with it. But our model says that the thinking comes first and that all the physiological symptoms follow it. We're supposed to experience fear. It's a normal, natural human system. We're supposed yes. to experience it when a herd of elephants are running towards us at 100 miles an hour. It's a good idea to yeah. run. Um, or a truly dangerous dog is, might, might be attacking you. That's, a, that's appropriate. But it's not appropriate you know, before ambling into a meeting 
or before going on uh, a going new, on, television. on Fox Network for the for the 400th time. By the way, you told me that you experienced it recently. Sure, we'll share absolutely. that later, but go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And what's uh, what what's happening is fear always comes from imagining bad stuff. Right? You know, as if like someone, I have a bad memory of something that happened at some other point. Well, it, it's it's always consciously or unconsciously because the mind is running through worst case scenarios. Yeah. So in other words, if someone says, "Okay, I have this meeting coming up, and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to cream it. They're going to love my presentation. We're going to close the deal. It's going to be worth sixty million dollars. I'll be able to buy my fiance a ring that's three times the size." They're not going to feel bad about it. Right? They're going to feel great because that's the thinking that goes with that's the feeling that goes with that kind of thing. So the adrenaline is being channeled in a positive direction. Yeah. So 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 the, the feelings come from come from the thinking, right? If they if they think, oh God, this meeting this you know this meeting is so important. You know, if I mess if I mess this up, it's going to you know, it could cost me my promotion, could cost me my job. My goodness, you know, sales are down this month. What if they, you know what if I what if, my what, job if what if what if what if what if what if? And so they don't start asking themselves, you know, what happens if I mess this up? Rather than how much good can I do by getting it right, and the mind will always respond to the questions that that we ask. How does the body then respond to the mind doing all these weird things, saying, well, "Oh my God, this is it. If I screw up, my career is over. Bad things will happen." What happens to the body? Sure, you get the physiological symptoms, and they vary from individual to individual. Some people will, you know, will foam at the edge of the mouth. You joked at the beginning, right. but some people will experience, you know, changes in the you know, often often a kind of dry mouth. Some people will get a, a wetter mouth. Some people certainly get wetter palms of their hands. Perspiring. Exactly. There are some people on our staff. Listen, don't hide in the control room. Their necks get red. Their faces get red. Sure. What's that about? It's the, it's just different people responding in different ways. Different fi different people have their own physiological makeup because all bodies are slightly different. Everyone's right. been eating slightly different stuff. Everyone's have has different levels of fitness and so on. And and, and there'll be, I believe, a genetic predisposition. Predisposition to be blushing rather than sweating or whatever. Sure. Um, but people have their own collection of, of ways in which they respond. But it always comes from the thinking first of all. What do you do? Well, um, in the moment, uh, one of the things that we that we teach, and this is I mean, most of the stuff we do takes a little longer to set up. But there's one thing that I can I can teach. By the way, we're going to put up your information so people can. We're going to have people go to the website, Mary. We're going to do that. We're going to drive people to the website, just so you know. Okay. But but let me let me let me set this one up for you, uh, because there are a few different. Uh, is that, do we want to talk about anchoring, or is that not a good thing to talk about right now? Uh, we can talk about what it is. I'm not sure that we have enough time to to teach it. How about the real really fast here. one then? Well, a real a real fast one is something we call the pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupt. A, a pattern interrupt. Pattern Give me an example. Pattern interrupt is something that we've all experienced. I mean, all of this stuff is stuff that we've all experienced many, many times, but just kind of without knowing about it. Um, and we'll talk about anchoring in a minute because that's, that's that's very cool. And we've all done it a thousand, a million times in our lives. But a pattern interrupt says that if one is, whenever we get into a fear response to something. So so if one has a pattern of getting nervous before flying. Right, or getting nervous before a meeting, or not wanting to go in that room because there might be a spider in it, right? And one sitting there experiencing fear. In order to maintain the fear, one has to keep the same pattern of uh, focus and physiology. And by focus, I mean what's going on in the mind, and physiology, I mean what's going on, what's going on in the body. And we've all heard that you know you should breathe more slowly if you're feeling a little bit nervous, and that's great advice, by the way. Um, Does it help? It makes it, it, it just changing the breathing will make a difference. I mean, if the problem is a nine out of ten problem, it'll maybe chip it, chip it down to eight out of ten. Okay. So it's great. It's a it's a good thing to do. It's a good, it's good advice. And when you, but, by the way, Mary, our producer just asked, what do you mean by nine out of ten? You mean on anxiety level? That's yeah. We call that the kind of the 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 sort of self diagnostic scale. In other words, you're saying out of ten, how bad is the fear to me right now? Ten what, means what, I can't do this. Ten, I got to get out of the room right is, now. Ten is I have to run. Zero is is nothing. Okay. And you know, before going on air, maybe you were experiencing a little bit of a four and thinking, well, hang on, this isn't appropriate because I'm a media professional or whatever. And that's how I'm going to tease you by saying, don't be fearful. Don't have any phobia about what's about to come. Be anxious. Be enthusiastic because, because Seymour is going to share with us more secrets as to what to do for the millions of Americans, all of us, I'll include myself, who had one degree or another experienced unnecessary but very real anxiety around all sorts of things. Stay with us. We'll be right back.